Hello and welcome everybody. Today I want to introduce you to lightning ranged animate weapon Necromancer, which I first played at the end of 3.23, but couldn't quite make a guide for because the league exclusive Spectres were removed at the end of Affliction League. In 3.25 those very Spectres were reintroduced, albeit in a lesser state, but they still enable the lightning version to outpace all other versions of ranged animate weapon in terms of damage and defenses. The minion's strengths are its long duration, decent minion survivability, amazing single target damage, an incredibly aggressive AI, and unlike the melee version it also has great clear. The only drawbacks are the weapons despawning on loading screens, including death, and the two button playstyle since you need to generate lingering blades to summon the weapons. The build can be played from league start to the end game, although you have to wait until you get bladefall at the end of act 3 to use animate weapon at least in a leak start scenario, because Ethereal Knives no longer generates lingering blades. However, it's actually better to use a different ability until you can access Unleash support at the end of Act 4, because it speeds up the summoning process remarkably. I personally recommend either Absolution or SRS, because they are available in Act 1 and pretty much guarantee a smooth leveling experience. I left a passive tree progression and a skill guide for the campaign in the low budget PUB for players that are unfamiliar with minion builds. Animate Weapon of Ranged Arms is a transfigured gem that you can get in the lab or buy from trade, which is what I did on League Start. It was around 2 chaos, so even when leveling, the transfigured gem is very accessible. Before that, you'll have to make do with the melee version. You can start using Tempest Shield and later Haste once you have enough reservation efficiency. And you can make use of Eldritch Battery to speed up summoning your weapons. Despite this, I still recommend using Unleash support while doing map-like content to speed up the summoning process even more. For bosses I only recommend it for Uber Elder, for the others it's usually not necessary. Hot swapping is also generally no longer required in the build. The Ascendancy of choice is the Necromancer, so you can boost minion damage and duration. Minion and player survivability via Mistress of Sacrifice with Bone Offering, and so minions can lead to life for you via Bone Barrier. The League Start setup features inexpensive uniques and rare items with life, resistances, and attributes. Trite Grip should have four blue sockets for full physical to lightning conversion and should be one of the first items to get. The Convoking Wand should be rolled with Deafening Essences of Fear for minion damage. The shield should be Shaper influenced with percentage life recovery on block. The Jinx Juju is a great defensive tool and should be anointed with Decay Ward because it's cheap and it increases minion survivability. The build can be scaled further by introducing a helmet with plus two levels to minion skill gems and the Eterm Plicit for reservation efficiency. The Surrender for more armor and life recovery on block and Lion Eyes Vision for peer support. For the flasks, you want to go with a life flask that removes bleeding, roomies for armor and block chance, a quicksilver flask for increased movement speed, a basal flask for even more armor, and an amethyst flask with the appropriate suffix for chaos and elemental resistances. For the jewels, you should mostly use ghastly air jewels with flat added physical and lightning damage because animate weapon scales well with it. For the Spectres, you want to use the Perfect Blasma for Smite, the Perfect Hulking Miscreation for the buff, and the Perfect Spirit of Fortune for Wrath and nearby allies lightning damage with hits is lucky. Lucky means the damage is rolled twice and the higher value is chosen, which scales lightning damage greatly, especially when combined with volatility support. The Spectres are itemized Spectres that you can get either from Rituals or Trade. Until you can access them, I recommend the Host and Carnage Chieftain for charges, as well as an Arena Master for the buff. For the Animate Guardian, I recommend a set of cheap uniques like Relentless Fury for Culling Strike, Leercast for minion damage, Rainbow Stride for Spellblock, Rare Hunter influenced gloves with Intimidate on hit, Zendethis' Cashawk to Chaos Cap the Guardian, which in combination with Broken Faith allows your Guardian to create Profane Ground on block, scaling your damage further. In the medium budget, you want to start using a large minion cluster with increased effect, 
minion attack and cast speed, elemental resistances, and potentially maximum life if you can afford it to boost damage and player survivability. In addition to that, you need a medium cluster with Feasting Fiends for minion leech and a life from death for minion life recovery on minion death which prevents Cascade Failure and allows you to actively heal your minions by animating new weapons when you are at max weapon count. You also want to start using Glorious Vanity to get access to Divine Flesh, optimally one that transforms these two notables into either Automaton Studies, Cult of Chaos, or Ritual of Flesh. To find jewels with the corresponding numbers, you can use the Timeless Jewel Finder in PUB by selecting the appropriate jewel. Conqueror, Keystone, and Notables, and then hit Search. Divine Flesh increases maximum Chaos resistance by 5% and lets you take 50% of elemental damage as Chaos damage. This reduces elemental damage taken as long as your Chaos resistance is capped, but is especially powerful against abilities that penetrate elemental resistances like certain abilities from Ubers, because only 50% of the elemental damage can actually penetrate your resistances. I also heavily recommend allocating Light Leiter and the instant Leech Mastery because this allows your minions to leech up to 1% of your life per hit. In reality, not all hits deal enough damage since they need to deal 10 times your hit points as damage to do so. Around 3 quarters of your minions' hits should deal at least that much damage when accounting for crit meaning you already get an additional 4k plus life recovery from instant leech in the bossing setup. This is of course scaled on by modifiers that reduce damage, like the less damage taken on Ubers, but it's still a worthwhile addition to almost any minion build. For the gear, I recommend a minion wand with fractured minion damage, rolled with a combination of jagged, metallic, shuddering, and corroded fossils for the plus two levels. If the item level is below 83, you can use a Bound Fossil instead of the Jagged Fossil for better rolls on average. You should replace Line Ice Fall with the 4th Vow to scale down hit-based Chaos damage, including half of the elemental damage that is taken as Chaos damage via Divine Flesh. Bases with the plus 2 level 2 Duration Gems Corrupt Implicit are very affordable and allow you to scale your defensive and offensive power at the same time. The easiest way to 6 link them is by benchcrafting 4 sockets and then using Tainted Jewelers to get 6 sockets, followed by benchcrafting 4 links and then using Tainted Fusings to get the 6 link. Ashes of the Stars increases the level and the quality of skill gems like your utility minions, auras, bone offering and anime weapon. For the latter, this scales base life, damage and the maximum number of weapons and overall increases minion and player survivability by scaling the auras and the offering. It should be anointed with Charisma for Aura Effect and Reservation Efficiency. If you want to anoint something else, you have to get the Reservation Efficiency from the Eater Implicit on the Helmet and an additional point of Reservation Efficiency from the Tree. The Flasks are the same as they were in the Low Budget. The Ghastly Eye Jewels should now feature Life or Armor in addition to Flat Added Lightning Damage and Attack Speed. And you should also start using the Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh combo that allocates Mastermind of Discord to enhance lightning exposure inflicted by Wave of Conviction. The fourth Spectre you can now use should be a Carnage Chieftain for Frenzy Charges and the AG should now use the Kingmaker for Culling Strike and Fortification, Legacy of Fury for Scorch and Gravebind plus an Explodey Chest to increase clear speed even further. In the high budget, you want to get an additional minion cluster with increased effect, minion attack and cast speed, chaos resistance and maximum life, as well as a mana reservation efficiency small cluster with increased effect, life and stats or resistances. This in combination with the reservation efficiency from the helmet allows you to fit the last aura Wrath. This is much more potent than the aura from your perfect spirit of fortune due to the 3.25 nerfs and the large amount of aura effect it gets from awakened generosity support. The gear is similar to the medium budget in general but includes better rolled items, for example fully crafted jewelry and a proper minion shield.
I've made crafting guides for those items that can be found in the crafting guide playlist in the description of this video and on my channel page. While plus one level to all minion skills on the shield scales the survivability of your utility minions, plus one to physical gems is not only much cheaper, but also scales your defenses via molten shell and determination, making it the superior choice in my opinion. For the weapon, I recommend a fully crafted convening wand, because the intelligence requirements are lower than that of a convoking wand, which allows you to transform more intelligence into either resistances or minion life via tattoos. For the same reason, you also want to get a general's helmet instead of the giant slammer helmet, because transforming the strength into armor via tattoos gives you more armor overall. For the rune word, I recommend going with minion damage because it scales overall DPS and is very affordable, but you could alternatively get a Shepherd of Souls to decrease the soul cost of the Val skill, making it more readily available, especially against bosses. The reason why I don't recommend this is because it roughly costs you 22 divines right now, and the most limiting factor in terms of the Val skills isn't the soul cost, but rather the long soul gain prevention timer. I personally recommend getting a second fourth vow with the same corrupt implicit to optimize efficiency for mapping and bossing. Three blue, two red, one green is optimal for bossing because it allows you to use another generic damage support gem like critical damage, which also supports the melee weapons you animate with the vault skill. Whereas for mapping, you want two green, two blue, two red to fit greater multiple projectiles for better clear speed. You could alternatively just change colors via the crafting bench whenever you're bossing, or just use peer support in the um, bossing setup, but given how cheap the corrupted bases are, I don't recommend it either. The triad grip should have corrupt implicits like plus two curse, duration, or minion gems, with plus two levels to curse and duration gems being optimal for damage. For the flasks, you want to get Progenesis instead of the Amethyst flask to increase survivability against hits even further. And the Ghastly Eye Jewels should now feature minion damage, attack speed, flat added lightning damage, and either maximum life or armor. The Spectres are unchanged. And for the Animate Guardian, you want to get a Crone of the Tyrant with a blue socket for added lightning damage, Hunter Influence Gloves for Intimidate, and last but not least, the Garb of the Ephemeral, so nearby enemies can't crit, and nearby allies' action speeds can't be reduced below base value. Overall, the build is pretty insane in terms of damage, minion and player survivability once it's finished. The additional damage and attack speed in the high budget also scales the amount of recovery you get via instant leech, allowing you to recover up to 8,500 life per second in the bossing setup, as long as your minions have a target to attack. And this is why it looked like I didn't take any damage from the clone's beam attack or ground degen, the main limitation in the Uber Elder fight being that your minions sometimes can't deal damage due to Shaper and Elder often being invulnerable. You could scale the defenses even further by replacing the minion shield with Swollen, but this costs you around 25% of your damage and a decent amount of minion survivability, which is why I don't recommend that. A better alternative would be to replace the Triad Grip with a pair of fully crafted gloves for additional armor, life, and resistances. This would also allow you to inflict exposure via Bladefall with the e implicit, allowing you to replace Wave of Conviction with automation support for Molten Shell, and I've left an example set up in the theoretical min-max PUB for those interested. And that's pretty much it for the guide. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments, I try to get to them as soon as I can. If you want to support my work or connect with me and my community, you can check out my socials including Twitch, Discord and Patreon on my channel page on the description of this video. Special thanks to my Patreon, your support is greatly appreciated and it helps me professionalize my work. Next up on my list is a pure Spectre build utilizing the Forged Frostbearers, so stick around if you're interested in that or minion-centered content in general. I hope you liked it. Until next time.